And that was the kickoff track from the new CD from Tuck and Patty, A Gift of Love. And the song we listened to right now was Up on the Roof. And it's a uh, really incredible CD that they just recently released. They're getting ready to go out on tour. And uh, they've been kind enough to spend time with us here on The Upper Room with Joe Kelly and WVOF. Uh, we welcome to the WVOF Airways, Patty Cathcart and Tuck Andrus. How you doing today? We're great. It's good to talk to you again. Yeah, really good. Yeah, it's been a few years, and uh, I, I know you've been busy touring and recording. Uh, a gift of love, I guess, for, for the folks out here in the States, it wasn't uh, meant to be released initially, and, and now it is, and that, that's great news. What, tell us the genesis of this record. Well, it started off really with a conversation with uh, uh, the head of A&R at the record company that, li- that we do a licensing deal with in Japan. Okay. And the idea was that it would be a song, uh, or it would be a, a CD of songs that, that Japanese people particularly remembered as very special love songs. So we put the word out to all our fans, and when we played concerts there, which we go there a lot, we put the word out to everybody, email us and tell us what songs you'd like to hear. So and, and we actually took that into account as well as ones that we particularly wanted to expose to them and uh, and ideas that the record company had. So it was a true group effort in, in choosing the songs. Now, did they, they send in s- some songs that were both your favorites? Well, you know, that that's the one thing that we let everybody know, obviously, that we look at all the requests and then if the ones that had the most votes or if, you know, there was a certain theme that was coming up, then we look at that and... That's how sort of close to you came about because so many people mentioned that song on their emails, but they all knew that the the, the, the was a typical Tuck and Patty rules in that if we didn't like it, we wouldn't do it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So, so your your initial going back in time uh, trips to Japan and uh, going over there and building this this great following and, and friendships over there. What was it like when you first went over there to perform and, and take us through the years to, to today? Well, you know, it was. We heard so much. All the everybody always told you, like Japanese audiences, or when you got there, they'd be very quiet and attentive, and not the sort of demonstrative the way you're used to in the states and all of that. But we never had that experience from the very beginning. We, in that, uh, they are really, really enthusiastic, and uh, uh, the, I guess the the first thing though is too is very true that it's a. It's, very, very intensely listening audience. They listen to every note, every mm-hmm. nuance. They're taking it in. So you can be in a, a, a rock club, like which was what we were playing the first time. Wasn't it a rock club the first time out? That's right. Yeah. And um, people all standing and stuff. And we kept thinking, God, nobody came to the concert because it was so quiet. And then you go out and it's packed, but people are just really, really respectful that way. And uh, so, but now, I mean, then it was sort of going to clubs and playing and, and beginning to... It was our first experience in Japan, so learning that. But now it's like we have dear friends. We just, I think, we just had our 26th trip or something, 27th wow. trip. Wow. And uh, we have a lot of really dear friends, so it's like really coming home to visit when we go there. Now, you're, you're based on the West Coast, and uh, you, you're gearing up for a pretty lengthy fall going into towards the winter U.S. tour. Um, what, what goes into uh, preparing for a tour? even though you've done it for so many years. Um, how about set lists and uh, stuff like that? How, how's it going to look for the, for the fans coming out and see Tuck and Patty? To me, it always looks the same, which is I have no idea what's going to happen until Patty calls the first song, and <laughs> no. that's usually when we're on stage. So, so there, there's right. never a plan that I've ever been able to figure out. <laughs> right, right. Oh, wow, is that, that, that's cool. Well, but, you know, since we've got the new CD out, we'll start doing it. We really haven't done that many of those songs lately, so... In, in the states at all, maybe a couple of them from that CD. So we'll be doing a lot more of those. And but we always get requests from people that have been coming for years. So our shows, we always try to make sure we include you know a, a wide range. And uh, officially, I guess it starts September 9th through the 12th over at the Catalina Bar and Grill in LA. Uh, all this information is at tuckandpatty.com, dot com. T u c k a n d p a t t i dot com and there's a lot of dates here on the East Coast. I'm looking over in Manhattan. You're playing the Iridium Jazz Club. Yeah, that'll be the last. I think that's the last tour on the last date on the right. East Coast. And yeah, it's sort of a northeast kind of little run, this one. And then later on, we'll catch go go back swing through the south. But I don't think that'll be until the first of the year. Well, I, I know for guitar and vocals, a performance, people may think it's it's easy to get the sound right. But 
Um, what what is most crucial for a Tuck and Patty performance when when you walk into a new venue, sound wise? You know, we we spend a lot of time tuning the PA, mm-hmm. really, and we've gotten good at doing that. And so we flatten the EQs and listen to the system just as it is, and then we figure out if we need to make any fundamental changes in the system, like changing amplifier levels or moving speakers or changing crossover levels, all that kind of stuff, then eventually we start EQing. We have the advantage that it's basically the same sound every night coming off of us, and that's all preset coming out of our our own rig. So really for us, doing a sound check is a little bit more like a mastering session. Well, I, I, I was reading about the recording of uh, the new CD, A Gift of Love, with uh, bringing some uh, additional musical friends in, and uh, you have your own studios, but uh, trying to coordinate it, there were some possible things you had to work on technically? Well, we definitely went to do those at, at the studio where we normally mix our CDs and uh, uh, in San Francisco, a different first. So for those those uh, parts uh, with uh, Frank Martin doing the keyboard, string sounds and everything, and and uh, Joseph uh, playing cello, we all we tracked all those at different fur in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. For our duo stuff, we do it at home all, as usual. Well, uh, I think we're going to get into another song off of Gift of Love with uh, Tuck and Patty, and, and I really have to give you a lot of compliments because a lot of these songs we've heard over the years, but uh, just to change up a song like uh, Loving You by Minnie Ripperton, dude, it's so outstanding. It's really impressive, so... You know, much respect to you guys. Thank you. Thank you. We had fun doing these songs. So so we'll listen to this right now. This is uh, Loving You from uh, Tuck and Patty, originally done by Minnie Ripperton. And we'll come back and speak more with Tuck and Patty right here on The Upper Room. And that was a song off the new CD, A Gift of Love from Tuck and Patty. And it's called Loving You, originally done by Minnie Ripperton. And it's from the new CD from Tuck and Patty. Which, uh, what, what's the best play? I, I know it's in a lot of stores. There are going to be in a lot of stores. Uh, how, how about ordering online? Uh, what's the best way? Well, we haven't started doing that on our site yet, although that's going to be coming. But I, Borders, Tower, you know, they're all there. And mm-hmm. Amazon.com, I know, carries it. And okay. I think it's even on iTunes. So. Right now, I think Borders and Tower both have it on sale. So Yeah, it's a good spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the place. Head on out, right? <laughs> and, and those listening to our broadcast here at WVOF, uh, we will be re-airing this interview and uh, Tuck and Patty music special for three to four days and nights at our Upper Room with Joe Kelly dot com website. So uh, you, you'll be able to listen to it uh, again. And uh, you know, I got to give you congratulations. Uh, I know the the previous record, Chocolate Moment, was a huge step in becoming independent musicians and uh, owning the masters. And you know, you got you ought to be commended for that. It's been it's been yeah. quite a wonderful and remarkable journey, and we're learning a whole lot about it. We, you know, in some countries we've sort of switched to more just just straight distribution. Other places was, we're still doing the uh, um, licensing arrangements. So, but that's it's really been it's a, a great education and really a, a wonderful time in our in our lives to be able to have that happen that we retain ownership of our work. Now, had had you been thinking it? For, for quite a while. And oh, you, yes. Yeah. For, I mean, I think that's every musician's right, <laughs> thought right. all the time. Right. And a lot of people don't really want to deal with the, what they perceive as the business part of it, and that doesn't particularly scare us. We've done it a lot over the years, so we're comfortable with that. For somebody who just doesn't want to think about it at all, maybe going, going independent is not the best thing. Mm-hmm. How, how about other musicians that you looked at how they were doing things? Did they inspire you to, to go independent the way they were doing it? Well, not so much because we knew what we'd, we would do would be licensing deals. Okay. So we have a record company called T&P Records, mm-hmm. but it's uh, it you're not going to see. Uh, I mean, I mean, nobody from our company is going out to stores trying to plug records. There's nothing like that going on. Instead, we license uh, to different companies around the world. And in many cases, there were companies that we already had relationships with, uh, but we just changed the structure of the deal. But the beauty of the whole thing is that we own the masters. And that really, I mean, right now that matters, but X years down the line, that starts to really matter. Oh, yeah, right, right. Uh, Do do you uh, guys get interested in uh, licensing your music for for soundtracks and different things like that? Yes, we've had people talk to us about it. And so we, with our problem recently has just been there's just not enough hours in the day to do all the stuff. Right, right. But, um, yeah, that's something we've really enjoyed and, and have 
have had, had people use them on TV mm-hmm. there on several times on different television programs and stuff, and that's great. But it would be fun to do something for a film. Now, uh, a lot of our listeners have loved your music through the years, but, uh, you know, you, you've been recording and performing together for, for a long, long time. And uh, how about the initial meeting uh, and, and getting this musical partnership together? How, how did it come about? Well, it came about seemingly by accident, but we figured that it would have happened even if that hadn't happened that day. It seemed like there were s- several people trying to get the two of us together. But we were in a, I was in a band. This is 1978. And uh, we were auditioning, trying, we were looking for a singer. Uh, and so that we, were, we had set up these auditions uh, in San Francisco, and Patty showed up. And, and she only had to sing a few notes before, obviously, of course, she, you know, the band was begging her to, to, to sing with us. But in addition, during those first few notes, uh, both Patty and I realized that we'd found a lifetime musical collaborator. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was the first time for either of us that something that extreme had happened. Now, now, how about working together as a married couple and uh, ha- having other musicians? Do they come to you for advice? They're kind of in the same situation. We do. We we do get that a lot. We get a lot of um, mail from other duos all around the world and sending CDs and talking about it. And then some of them actually also are are involved in um, uh, marriage relationships or personal relationships on top of their their playing together. And it's it's pretty it's. It's kind of amazing, really, to see these other duos pop up that were inspired from what we did, but they've taken it in their, you know, they have their own voices. They've gone ahead and, and gone off in their own directions. And we have some really good friends in Japan, and there are a couple of guys that have, like, a guitar duo, and they are really, really inspired by us and uh, and and great devotees, really, right. of Tuck. And, and we it was really a wonderful experience to have met this kid when he was really a kid with his parents at a concert, what, 10 years ago or something, yeah. Tuck? And now, this last time we were in Japan, we actually went and guested on their new CD coming out in Japan. Oh, okay. And to see them grow and 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 then, to, you know, to actually go and be a guest on their CD, it was really, it's just it's just a great, great feeling to know that you've sort of mentored somebody or inspired them. Well, I've heard countless times in this area with um, songwriters and musicians kind of, you know, when with, when people want to describe other people's music, what they do and what kind of music they play, they'll, sometimes you'll hear it's like a Tuck and Patty kind of vibe, you know. So I think you guys really made that impression on a lot of musicians. What's really neat because, you know, the way it works is you never get to thank the people who inspired you. you I mean, if you're lucky, you might meet a, a handful of them, but I'll never get to thank Jimi Hendrix. And right, there's right. a whole list of other people that I really won't get a chance to thank. Mm-hmm. Uh, or to give anything back to, so it's it's nice to be able to give something back and you know inspire somebody else, and that's the way it's supposed to work. You you always are just supposed to pass it on. Right. So so my guests right now, Tuck and Patty, right here at WVOF, and uh, we're going to get into another song from the new CD, A Gift of Love, from Tuck and Patty. They are getting ready to go out on tour, uh, starting in September. They'll be here in the on the East Coast, uh, down in New York City, also Paul in New York and uh, Piermont, right? That's right. Yeah, so ample opportunity. Also up in Boston, and uh, a song that, you know, when I first heard this uh, off the record, Hold Me Tight and Don't Let Go, mm-hmm. I love this song. And i got to ask you, who did this originally? Uh, his name is Roy Hamilton. Oh, okay. I, I, I didn't know it. Yeah, he had a few songs out. Um, he, he died really young. Oh, okay. And so he had a few. He did a version of that, When You Walk Through the Storm. Remember that, Keep. Hold your head right, up high. Right. He did, he had he had he made it was like turned into a pop hit with him, but it was a hit of a short short time with us. But I just always loved that song. Yeah, I mean, growing up, I heard that song so many times. So it was yeah, cool that, that was what the CD was like. It was sort of all these songs that you don't think about all the time, but as soon as you hear it, it's like wow. <laughs> right, right. So so let's give it a listen right now. This is uh, from Tuck and Patty's new CD, and uh, the song is called "Hold Me Tight and Don't Let Go." Right here on WVOF. And we're back here with Tuck and Patty, right here on WVOF in the upper room with Joe Kelly. And the new CD, A Gift of Love, from Tuck and Patty. And and how, how many CDs total does this uh, add to the, the discography? Are we including, think, including your album? And we include, include the best of and all that. Are we about 10 or 11? Uh-huh. Something like that. Yeah, we're at about 10, maybe not including best of. Okay, maybe so 12 with best of. 
I think there's so many best dozen samplers now. We don't know how many of those are out. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> The well, official ones, probably ten. Right. Well, well, I noticed uh, from from checking out your website a while back that uh, you, you did make it uh, allowable for people to come to your shows and, and tape. Yes. Yeah. Do you find people? Uh, have you heard any of the stuff that they taped? And, you know, I haven't ever heard. Of, I've seen people doing it, but I haven't heard anything. Right. Right. Do Do you uh, tape uh, any of your shows when you go out on tour? Uh, periodically we do. At some point we figure we'll tape everything. The problem is getting time ever to listen to any of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you right, go out right. the next night and it's time to play again. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> so so the tour uh, will be going uh, all through this fall. And um, do you have any spots, that uh, venues that you haven't? I mean, I'm sure every, every night's a special night, but any of the newer venues that you haven't visited? that you're really looking forward to, to setting up shop on this tour? Well, it's going to be a lot of, going back to places we've always been will be great. It'll be our first time to play at Iridium in New York. Mm -hmm. So that'll be interesting to go to the club. We've gone there to listen to music when we've been on the East Coast, but we've never played there. So that'll be great. And um, there's a new venue in Philadelphia, you know, the, the World Cafe. Okay. Uh, right. They've got a new venue now called the World Cafe. Mm -hmm. in philadelphia so that should be really cool and they built a really beautiful it's just opening up i think the first week of october and it's a real state-of-the-art gorgeous place they've built there so dedicated to music so that should be really wonderful to go it's just, especially when you see a place that they've actually put a lot of uh, time and uh and money into making it sound good they have excellent sound system and you know they've just really gone all out to make it really a music place and that's ideal for for your music. Yeah, it's going to be exciting right. to actually to to experience that. Now, now for for musicians out there, listen, uh, we've got people to check out the show, and and just for general knowledge, when when you do when you do an album of songs that are their covers, what what's the process that you go through? I mean, I know it could be a long long uh, explanation, but just a synopsis on uh, how do you go about it. Well, usually for us, we're doing it because we really love the tune. So it's it's a lot of times it starts off being in our minds a really loving tribute to the artist, you know, who who did the song mm -hmm. or the writer that we really enjoy the work. And so to us, it, it normally starts off that way. Uh, other times, it's like I've always wanted to do a song. In this case, I always wanted to do "Close to You," and when a lot of people were talking about that song, it was perfect time to do it. And in my mind, I had always heard it as this bossa nova joe beam kind of tune and so it was my chance to have my little joe beam fantasy moment <laughs> there you go <laughs> it was so great to play with frank he plays such a beautiful solo on the tune now now do you get word or, or hoping to get word from some of these artists uh, on your versions of the songs so, you know every once in a while we do and that's always really uh, you know it's really amazing when that happens and uh very humbling you know right right I mean, it's a, it's a pretty diverse record, and, and I think people are going to uh, love this. I mean, Cindy Lauper's Time After Time on there to, to wrap up the record. Yeah, the yeah. little remake of the one we did years ago. But it, it, what happens is that the, every time we do the song, it's different. So that was just sort of a different view of that same tune again. And, uh, of course, another production from Patty as she produced this record. Now, now a as a producer, how do you... Uh, work with your husband and musician, all the songs. Um, how does that usually work? Well, see, I guess I just, I, I, pretty, I, I sometimes have a very, very clear vision of what I'm hearing come from Tuck. I tend to hear in uh, orchestras and choirs and bands and hear that kind of a sound. And, and as all the years have gone by, especially when I'm writing for him, I'm really thinking about his guitar style. So I'll have ideas about that or textures that I want to hear. And uh, Tuck is really, you know, he's very gracious and really listening and hearing me out about all the ideas I have and then trying to trying to bring them, you know, to life for me because he's always telling me I'm coming up with these ridiculously impossible guitar parts. <laughs> but uh, he keeps on playing them. I have yet to uh, to play a song that Patty has arranged where I haven't had to stretch in some way that, that I didn't ever expect to, to stretch. It still amazes me that she keeps finding these things. So, so are there a lot of multiple takes in the studio on, on particular songs? Well, if I had my way, it'd be up in the hundreds or thousands. <laughs> right. Patty likes to do first or second take. You okay. Know? Right. Now, now, Tuck, I, I know, you know a lot of guitarists, big, big uh, admirers of your work, and 
How, how about your own collection? How many guitars do you, do you keep? I'm not really a collector of guitars. I've got a couple of these old uh, Gibson L5s, mm-hmm. and one of them stays at home and I record with it, and the other one is uh, is the one I travel with. It's been through about 1,200 flights under the plane in a road case. And uh, I'm not very particular about guitars for just my own pleasure. I mean, we've got a, a toy guitar with uh, nylon strings at home uh, with a you know, a small, small neck and everything. Uh, that I'm ha- as happy to play that one sitting around as I am to play, you know, a vintage, beautiful instrument. So, but, I mean, when it actually comes down to performing or recording, then it's got to be a, a great instrument. Right. Do you, do you visit a lot of guitar shops on the road? No, it's about no. the last thing that I do, really. I'm, right. I've just never been a, a consumer of guitars, and it's, it's a contrast to the way it used to be when I could literally, you know, spout out the entire... Uh, Gibson catalog verbatim, probably including dimensions of every of every guitar and prices. You know, as a 13 year old, I was I was fantasizing big time. But at this point, I'm more into playing it and and less into uh, into the equipment. It's not, I don't really use an amp. And our 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 setup is so stable that that things don't change very much. And so I'm not very involved in that. Occasionally, I'll drop by and buy some strings. And that's about it. And my special guest this moment, Tuck and Patty, their new CD, A Gift of Love. And you can go to the website tuckandpatty.com, T-U-C-K, and patty, P-A-T-T-I.com. And the new album is great. You're going to be hearing a lot of the songs on the tour. And also, Chocolate Moment, another great CD, which is, uh, I guess, your your first official independent release? Yes. Chocolate, yes. That was the first one. Yeah, which came out in 2002. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. There's more to come. We did a DVD uh, recording, and uh, that should be coming out. We're trying to 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 make the deadline to to have it out for in time for Christmas. If we don't make that, then we'll do it first quarter next year. But wow. we did a concert in Holland, and uh-huh. we've done a so we've got the DVD, and we're also including CD in the in the set, and then a, a, a documentary that they shot on us. So that should be a nice little package. And of course, people should bring some. Uh some extra money to the concert because I'm sure you'll have the CDs all available there. Yes, we'll bring them with us. Right. And uh, if you just tuned in and missed out on uh, the beginning of the interview with Tuck and Patty, you can uh, sign up for our mailing list if you haven't done so already at UpperRoomWithJoeKelly.com. We'll be re-airing this three to four nights in its entirety. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you on the tour here on the East Coast. Yeah, we are. We're looking forward to it, too. And it kicks off in, in L.A. And... Uh, how is it on on the uh, the West Coast? You both you both are from there originally. I am from San Francisco. Okay. I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh, okay. Any stops in uh, in Tulsa on this tour? You know, we have, I don't know if we've played professionally in Tulsa ever. I think we haven't actually. Right. It's time for the homecoming, right? I guess so. Yeah, if we right. wait long enough. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so so I really have to thank you both. I, I know the last time I think we spoke is when Tuck you were injured. Yeah, We're yeah, it was in uh, in in two thousand one. Right, uh, right. So everything's yeah. fine, and uh, well, yeah, everything's fine. Patty broke her foot after I broke mine about a <laughs> oh, year really? later, and then we <laughs> we both got that out of our systems, and we're both up and fine at this point. Right. So I, I'm definitely wishing you a lot of uh, great journey on this tour, and I'm sure people once they get this uh, CD, we've been featuring music on it already, but uh, they're going to really, really enjoy this. Great. Thanks, Joe. It's really good yeah. to talk to you and. Thanks for all the support. Yeah, oh. really. Thanks very much. And uh, we will right now get into, uh, we're going to go with three songs right now. We're going to hear a song which uh, obviously is uh, pretty uh, strong with uh, the folks out in Japan, uh, Sukiyaki. Originally done by Taste of Honey, right? Yeah, actually, the that. first guy no? was, this song is really interesting in that it was the only, as far as I know, pop radio hit in the United States that was in Japanese. Oh, okay. And uh, that was like in the early 60s, wasn't it? Yeah, I think. That's right. Yeah. It was a hit on the radio here. So it was very unique that way. And then years later, Taste of Honey did it in English, and, and uh, it also then charted then, too. So so it's another great version that uh, you do it original Tuck and Patty style. And then, <laughs> then we'll hear a great uh, guitar instrumental, Billy Joel's Just the Way You Are from... Uh, Tuck, and then we'll visit the Chocolate Moment album and uh, listen to One for All from uh, Tuck and Patty. So thanks so much. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Tuck and Patty. Thanks. 